Hello folks, in this video I am going to talk about correlations, especially how to calculate Pearson correlation coefficient which is one of the most widely and often used in the best way possible with the p-values and heat map. Starting with the data frame, this is how we need to take our data. As you can see, I have taken the variables in the columns and the entries in the rows. You can take out the first two columns, in my case the serial number and genotypes, if you are not comfortable with the code in the excel sheet itself, but I do take it out in the R. Finally save the data before importing it into the R. So let's get into the analysis with the R studio. If the text in the script is not visible, means do increase the resolution of the video, then watch. I will begin with a new R script. Bring the dataset into the environment. To do that, click on the import dataset. Through that, select from Excel. Browse the location. In my case, I have stored it in the folder called correlation on the desktop. If your Excel file contains more than one sheet, select it from here. By default, it will be selected as the first sheet and from here, you can change the name if you want. But I do keep it as P only because it is easy enough to type in the console. Finally, before importing, ensure that all the variables are in doubles, that means numbers. Then click on import. And from here, we can check our data set. Let's start with the coding. The package used here is Madden. I do understand this package is meant for multi environment trial analysis, but it is good enough for our calculations. If it is not installed, install it for the first time using install.packages command and within double inverted commas, mention the package name Madden all in small letters. Since I already have this package, I just load it from the library. Wait until the package loads. The red blink has to stop here as you can see. Now the package has been successfully loaded. Let's store the Pearson correlation coefficient in corl, C-O-R-R-L, just a short form for correlations. And the function used here is core underscore coef from the metan package. The only argument is our data frame that is P. Within that, we need to select the variables. Since we need the correlation among all the variables, we do need to select all the columns except these two because there is no role of serial number and genotypes in mathematical operation in calculating correlations. In order to select them, we need to add big brackets. Within them, we need to mention rows, comma, columns. Since we need all rows, I will leave the space before comma empty and after comma, we need to select the columns. Since we need to take out the first two columns, I will write the code as minus 1 is to minus 2. That means take out the columns from 1 to 2. In order to execute this line, hit Ctrl plus Enter. Then, in order to view our correlation coefficients, plot the correlations, that is CORRL in short. Then we will get this heat map. Ignore these warning messages as they have no role in altering the coefficients. This much is enough for most of us because we will get our correlation coefficients with the significance values here. We can take the screenshot of this image directly from the snip tool and we can save it wherever we need. And we can also export it, it as an image. Then we can save it with the optimum amount of resolution. Here I will increase the width by 3 times that is 628 into 3, 1884. If we have maintained the aspect ratio, then height will also change automatically. Then we can browse the location where we need to save this file. I will save it on the desktop where I have saved the correlations. Then I will change the name of the plot as desirable. Then I will click as save. You can see the preview here itself. Let me show you it in the destination itself. Here you can see the plot. I think this much amount of resolution is good enough for print. Let me close them all and show you how to interpret the heat map. 0.3 is the correlation coefficient between SPAT 45 days and SPAT 75 days. 0.06 is the correlation coefficient between number of ports per axle and SPAT 45 days. 0.17 is the correlation coefficient between number of ports per axle and SPAT 75 days. 0.03 is the correlation between days to maturity and number of ports per axle. Minus 0.1 is the correlation between days to maturity and SPAT 45 days. Minus 0.04 is the correlation between days to maturity and SPAT 75 days. This is the scale of correlation coefficients. Deeper the red color indicates the positive correlation. Deeper the blue color indicates negative correlation. Here we can see there is a strong positive correlation between days to maturity and days to 50% flowering. And these are the p-values. Based on them only single star, double star and triple star have been assigned for the significance in correlations.
I think most of us can make a correlation table just looking into the heat map. If you won't understand, let me show you how to get the correlation table. In order to get that, we need to print the correlation. In short, we have saved it as CORRL. Here you can see these are the p values, these are the correlation coefficients, and we can also save our result in a text format. In order to do that, we need to set the working directory first from the menu bar choose working directory and we will set the working directory into the original folder correlation which is already saved in the desktop and we can use this function to know the working directory so here in the console we can see the working directory in order to sync this file we need to use sync function within that in double inverted commas we need to mention the file i will mention as call.txt then we need to give the command which gives the output here Within the print function, we need to mention the variable where the correlations have been stored, that is CORRL, and execute this line of code. Then, to terminate syncing, we need to give this function sync within parentheses, don't write anything. Execute this line and go back to the working directory. Here, you can find the output file. So, friends, that is it. We can get the correlation with the significance results. If you like this video, do hit the thumbs up and Please do subscribe this channel to make the data analysis more open, enjoyable, especially for the agricultural community. And do visit my data analysis playlist in the channel for more videos on data analysis. Thank you.